this is Francesca from Under the Covers and today we are doing our Nameathon TBR. So if you didn't catch our announcement video, I will leave it linked up above or down in the information box down below. But we teamed up with Ideally Inspired Reviews to host a readathon during September 16th through September 22nd. And it is all about being social and getting to know each other here in the booktube and bookstagram community. As the name of the readathon says, it's a Nameathon, so it is going to be based either on your name, your nickname, your initials, your blog name, your handle, whatever you want to use to make up your prompts. And each letter has a specific prompt that corresponds to that letter. So I will leave a link again in the information box down below for the list of prompts so that you can also make up your TBR. And I will also leave a link to the graphic with the Instagram prompts for each day as there will be a different challenge on Instagram of posting a different kind of picture and talking about different things. Again, we encourage you guys to be very sociable during this readathon and it is September 16th through the 22nd. So be sure that you get your TBRs ready. So that being said, I'm going to get us started and I am going to be doing Fran. So F-R-A-N. I'm not going to be very ambitious and I'm only doing four books for right now. I'm not doubling up on these prompts. So hopefully I can stick to this TBR. So for the F, I am supposed to be reading a foodie romance, which I always really enjoy foodie romances. I decided to pick one that I also have put on my Apollicon 20 in 20 TBR. And the book that I'll be reading is Sweet Cheeks by Kay Bromberg. This is a standalone second chance romance. The heroine is a small town baker, which I'm really excited about. And the hero is now a hotshot big Hollywood movie star. And they used to date and he broke her heart. Now he's come back 10 years later just at the perfect time because she accidentally finds herself having to attend her ex's wedding and she needs a date because her assistant accidentally mailed the invitation to her ex's wedding that she had jokingly filled out as replying that she was going with a plus one. I'm really excited to read Kay Bromberg again. I had read two of her books in the Driven series and then I never picked her up again. So I am really looking forward to trying something new and fresh from her especially a foodie romance. For the R, my prompt is to read a royal romance and I may be cheating a little bit on this one, but I'm calling it a royal romance, even though it's a sci-fi romance. So I'll be reading Aurora Blazing by Jesse Mihalik. This is book two in the Consortium Rebellion series and I'm really looking forward to reading this book. The heroine is royalty. She's the daughter of one of the big families that are the leaders of the different worlds. She had actually done her duty for her family and for her house and she had married somebody as an arranged marriage because of political reasons and she was trapped in a terrible marriage for a while until her husband died. She is still working for the high house but she's using all her connections to save young women that are in predicaments. Basically now her organization has a lot of information and information is power. After an attack, our heroine's oldest brother is kidnapped from Earth and she decides to go find him against her father's orders. When she doesn't come back, her father sends the head of security for their family, who is sort of the bodyguard that we met in the first book and he is very straight-laced and very by the book and he's tasked with finding her and bringing her back. For the A, I'm supposed to be reading a TV or movie adaptation and I'm again cheating just a little bit, but I will be reading Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Now, I know that this is not out yet as a TV or movie adaptation, but when this book came out, obviously the news is already out that this is being produced by Reese Witherspoon and I think with Amazon and there will be some sort of a movie or mini series or something like that. There is no release date for this, but I'm counting it anyway. And for the end, I'm supposed to be reading a new to me author. I have decided to finally read Wolf Song by TJ Klune. This is the first in the Green Creek series and it is male male shifter romance. I'm so excited to read these four books and I can't wait to see what the rest of the UTC girls and Stephanie from Ideally Inspired Reviews will be reading, which will be coming up next in this video. Hey guys, it's Stephanie from Ideally Inspired Reviews. I'm so excited to finally kick off the Nameathon Readathon with the ladies from Under the Covers book blog. I've been in such a reading slump in the last couple of months, so putting together this TBR has been just a load of fun. Um, I definitely kind of feel like I'm getting back on track, getting more focused on my reading. Um, so I'm really excited to talk to you guys about the selections that I made. Um, I'm feeling 
over ambitious <laughs> a little um, I'm gonna do all nine letters of my name so nine books though some of them are rereads um, full disclosure um, so I think that it'll make it easier for me to get through all nine reads but fingers crossed um, so let's just jump right in the first letter is the letter S and the prompt that I'm going with is red cover and the book that I selected was The Wedding Date by Jasmine Guillory. Um, for those of you who are unfamiliar, Jasmine is a woman of color. She writes a, a vastly diverse cast of characters in all of her books. Um, this was her debut and um, it's really sweet. I feel like it's a nice fluff, um, but warm and fuzzy um, romance if that's your bag, um, contemporary. And it starts off with uh, the hero and the heroine being stuck in an elevator, basically. Um, and, you know, as awkward and um, fun as that can be. Um, and then they build this really sweet acquaintanceship and um, the hero ultimately invites her uh, to go um, be his wedding date to his ex's wedding. And then a romance blooms um, as the story story goes on and it's really really sweet um i'm gonna keep saying sweet because honestly like if there was any other word <laughs> that i could use it would just be that this is so sweet like honestly it's kind of like where you're like holding it to your chest and you're like oh, such a great romance story um i highly recommend it i read it um as an arc prior to release so i'm really excited to be able to reread this one the next letter is the letter T and the prompt that I chose to go with is a book released in 2018. Now, uh, please don't throw tomatoes at me, but I am picking um, The Cruel Prince by Holly Black. I know that there are a lot of people that are like, how have you not read this already? I don't know, um, but I'm excited to finally start it. Um, this book is um, a YA dark fantasy. Um, I say that it's dark, but I don't really think that it's classified as such, but the gist that I have gotten from reviews and reviewers and other friends who have read it is that this is a pretty dark romance, um, or not romance, I'm sorry, pretty dark YA fantasy. Uh, fairies, um, revenge plots, uh, betrayals, maniacal villains, I'm very excited about it. Um, <laughs> and the blurb from Lee Bardugo is that it's a lush, dangerous, and dark jewel of a book. So I'm really excited to start this one. Um, it is the first of a trilogy. The first two are out, and the third one is coming out, um, I believe, in November. Um, and this cover is gorgeous. I love it. So I'm excited. The next letter is the letter E. Uh, so the prompt that I'm choosing to go with with the first letter E of my name is Enemies to Lovers, which is my favorite trope um romance trope to read uh, i love it um, and this one is a reread for um those of you who are not familiar this is uh wicked abyss by cressley cole and it is part of the immortals after dark series but i think you can totally read this as a standalone if you've not read it for those of you that are kind of um scared off by long-standing series i don't i don't even know how many books there are i think maybe 13 um maybe even more in the Immortals After Dark books. I think you can totally read this one as a standalone. As I said, I've recommended it to people as a standalone and other people who have read it that have not read any of the other books in the series have been able to follow it. And as you can see, it's pretty short. Um, so it's not like worldy, like wordy and the world building isn't really, you know, over your head. Um, but as you can imagine, if it's written by Cressley Cole, it's an adult book and it is very um, but it's basically about the king of hell who um, has a faded mate, basically, and um, she is a reincarnate and um, the, he harbors a lot of resentment towards her, um, but she doesn't remember any of her past lives to understand why he um, is so angry with her and why he's holding this grudge. And so um, basically they end up having to be married, um, kind of like a marriage of convenience, um, but basically to help because they're both from um, warring nations and um, by them being together, 
it's helping to bring peace to their lands, but also they have to learn how to coexist. So, but it's a paranormal or urban fantasy um, series. So there are some dark fae and demon-ish um, creatures and things, but it's super steamy. I highly recommend it. And if you haven't read the Immortals After Dark series, it is so good. And if you're into audio, that is a, a great um, series. The narrator is amazing. Um, so the next prompt that I'm going with is the letter P and, um, I'm going with single parent and this author is also new to me as well. Um, but the book that I chose was Wait For Me by K.L. Grayson. It's a new release. Um, I think it just came out in July, the end of July, but, um, it's a single father. So Dilf, yes, um, who, um, has the hots basically for this, um, pop star. Um, and it seems to me from the synopsis, because I actually haven't talked to anybody who's read it, um, that they kind of, um, have like a fake relationship, um, to kind of take some heat off of her, off the press, like the press leaving her alone essentially um, and then it turns into a romance so I'm really excited to see how it all plays out and like I said I've not read her before but I have very high hopes because you really can't go wrong with a single dad in my opinion um in books not in real life I don't really know if I actually could take <laughs> Anyways, all right, so the next prompt is rom-com for the letter H, and the book that I selected was Well Met by Jen DeLuca, and this book is actually out um, the first week of September, and um, this is also going to be a reread for me. It is definitely, a, there are so many laugh out loud moments. Um, if I could describe it in one sentence, I would say love at the Ren Fest, or Ren Fair, however you like to call it. Um, it seems really geeky and nerdy, and it is, but it's also a little bit of an enemies to lovers twist to it. Um, the hero is a school teacher, which already I'm like, yes. Um, and the heroine is a volunteer um, at the Ren Fair, and he has familial ties with the Ren Fest. Um, so, like, there's also that element. Um, small town type of situation, but it also takes place in Maryland, which is where I live. So I love reading books about um, local um, settings. So well met, definitely highly recommend it. Uh, the next letter is A and the prompt that I'm going with is the TV movie adaptation. And this book is a reread. Uh, it is A Discovery of Witches by Deborah Harkness. And uh, I got the movie tie-in cover, which I don't typically normally like to get, um, but because I did, I can now break the spine and bend the covers back without being, you know, worried about how my books look. But um, if you haven't heard of A Discovery of Witches or seen the show, it is it is magic realism, urban fantasy-ish, um, witches, vampires, and demons um, at its heart. <laughs> Um, and she's a witch who discovers this um, really old um, manifest uh, in um, the Bodleian Library in England and um, basically all of the creatures want to get their hands on it, all the species of creatures want to get their hands on it and so um, she's basically trying to unlock the mysteries and um, of her heritage as well as of all the species and so danger ensues and craziness but she ends up falling in love with a vampire which is you know I wish that could be my life um but yes so paranormal slow burn romance definitely adult for fans maybe of the magicians definitely Harry Potter like if you like you know the magic in Harry Potter this is a great one for you as well the night circus that kind of thing very lush and it's wordy, so I will give you that, but the narration on the audiobook is amazing for it. Um, if you've ever listened to A Court of Thorns and Roses, it's the same narrator as A Court of Thorns and Roses. It's so, so, so good. Ugh. And if you haven't seen the show, the show is amazing too. Maybe watch that before starting the book and it might get you interested, maybe. Um, the next letter is the letter, and I'm looking off because I have it written on a whiteboard. <laughs> 
the, the letter N and the prompt that I'm going with is a new to you author. Uh, the book that I selected was The Locker Room by Megan Quinn and uh, Sports Romance, yes, ticks on my boxes. This cover is really cute, cool, huh? I don't know, like I love these colors. I love the vibrancy of the cover and I'm like looking right at his crotch when I did that one. Um, <laughs> but uh, this book is um, obviously about baseball player and baseball and hockey I feel like you, if you pitch me a book about either one of those sports I'm game um contemporary romance very excited for that one and it's ranked really well on Amazon and I've heard so much about it so I'm excited uh the next one is the letter I I am the prompt that I chose was a European hero and the book this is a reread is Fight or Flight by Samantha Young. This is the UK cover, which I love. Um, I also read this book super early um, and I've been meaning to reread it. If you've read any of Sam Young's other books, uh, On Dublin Street is the one I think that she's most known for. I love that one. That is one of my top, top like forever books. Um, this one definitely gave me a lot of On Dublin Street vibes. Excuse me, the um, the hero is Scottish, so yum, though the book itself takes place in Boston. Um, a little bit of an enemies to lovers aspect um, in the beginning. Um, they meet on, an, on a flight um, and they basically are antagonistic towards each other throughout most of the first you know, few chapters, but it's really funny um, because they try to one up each other in being awful to the other. Um, so I highly recommend this one if you haven't read it. And last but not least, my second letter E, the prompt that I chose was green cover um, or green on the cover. Um, I'm cheating a little bit because this is a second book by Jasmine Guillory on my TBR, but this one hasn't yet released and I haven't yet read it. So um, when she wrote this book, or by the way, I'm sorry, it's The Royal Holiday, Royal Holiday by Jasmine Guillory. When she wrote this book, um, I remember when they first announced it and that she had said that she was um, inspired by Megan, Megan Markle's mom, um, at the Royal wedding. Um, but I'm really excited to read this one. Um, it's about a woman who gets hired to, um, dress a member of the Royal family and basically falls in love while in London. Um, so who wouldn't want to go to London and fall in love? Uh, I definitely do. So I'm very excited <laughs> to read this one. And it's such a gorgeous cover. I love the illustrated covers. I know that they're kind of overdone right now but this is so great. So yeah, that's it. That is my TBR. Look at that stack right there. Oh my goodness. Um, I hope that you guys have just as much fun as I did putting this together. And I can't wait to see what you guys have. Um, make sure that you're following all of us. You can follow me on Instagram at Ideally Inspired Reviews, on Facebook under Ideally Inspired Reviews, or the blog, go directly to IdeallyInspiredReviews.com. And I can't wait to see your posts. See you later. Hey guys, it's Annie, and now it's my turn to share what I'm going to be reading for the Name-a-thon. I'm really excited about this read-a-thon. I think it's a great idea, and I think I'm going to be a little bit ambitious with this one and try my full name, so Annie, that's five letters, A-N-N-I-E. Um, I do have a couple of duplicates there with the N, so I'm looking forward to trying the two different options for those. So I'm going to get started and talk about the books that I hope to be reading during September 16th to the 22. For A, I am going with the film and TV adaptation. And for this one, I'm going to cheat a little bit because uh, I do have five books planned. I don't know if I'll be able to get them all done, but I just kind of want to give you a different ideas. I just want to show you that you don't necessarily need to read romance books. Uh, there's quite a lot of YA books out there. There's even comic books, mangas out there that often get turned into films um, and also TV series. So the one that I am currently going to be reading is actually a manga. It's a Japanese manga and it's called Coffee and Vanilla. 
and recently it's been turned into a drama. So I've been watching the drama and have been enjoying it. Um, sometimes it can be a little bit on the cheesy side, but um, if you're a fan of the billionaire romance, I think you're really going to love this one. Also, if you really like the concept of an alpha hero, you're really going to love this manga. So hopefully with the other romance books that I'm going to be reading, this is going to be an easy one for me because it is a manga. Um, there's less words in it to read and hopefully it's going to be an easy one. So for N, it's a new to me author and I'm going to go with Eva Gates. Eva Gates is a cozy mystery author that I haven't tried yet. Um, I've been kind of eyeing her books for quite some time. She has a new book called Read and Bury. Um, it's going to be an advanced reader copy so I'm looking forward to seeing um, if her writing style is a good fit for me. I'm always looking forward to trying out different cozy mystery authors. As you know, it's a genre that I've been really into lately and um, I love discovering new authors and series. So fingers crossed that this is going to be another one that I love. So for the next N in my name, the second option is to have a mature hero or heroine. And whenever I think of mature heroes or heroines, I always think of Kristen Ashley. She tends to feature a lot of older characters in her books, which I love. Um, and I'm going to be reading one of the Berg series, the first book in the Berg series, which is For You. Um, I was a little surprised that I haven't read this book yet. According to my Goodreads, it says that I didn't. But um, I thought I did for some reason. Um, so I'm hoping to use this readathon as an excuse to get started on that series. But to be honest, I haven't read a Kristen Ashley book for quite some time now, uh, but I used to really love them a few years ago. So I'm hoping uh, that this book will probably get me back into the groove. So for the I in my name, this requires me to read a book with a European character or setting. Um, and this one was an easy pick for me. I'm going to go with Torch by Donna Grant. Uh, this is part of her Dark King series and this whole series is set in Scotland. I'm a big fan of this series. If you love paranormal romance featuring dragons, I think you're really going to enjoy this one. Uh, Torch is one of the previous books in the series that I mistakenly missed out on. Um, I think I just totally forgot about this book and so I'm going to go back now and read it and try to catch up. But I really like the heroes of this series. They all have uh, that Scottish vibe to it. Um, so if you like the alpha males, I think you're going to really like this series as well. And lastly for the E of my name, I'm going to go with Enemies to Lovers. Um, I'm going to go with a Susan Elizabeth Phillips book for this one and it's called Kiss an Angel. I believe this is one of her standalone titles, so I'm eager to try uh, one of her older titles and see how that fares with me. I kind of went on a SEP binge uh, quite a while ago, but have kind of fallen off of that, so I'm trying to get back into that little groove again and hopefully uh, read more of her backlist titles. And I think this is a great way to take advantage of this readathon is to pick books that have been on your TBR for quite some time so you can kind of clean up that um, TBR and make it a little bit more manageable. So those are the five books that I hope to be reading during the 16th to the 22nd of September. I'm definitely looking forward to this challenge and hopefully I can get them all done. That's all for me guys and I will see you in the next video. Bye! Hi guys, this is Suzanne and I'm going to be talking about what I am reading for Nameathon. So obviously my name is S-U-Z-A-N-N-E and that is seven letters. I am not going to be able to read a book a day. Just facing reality, I just won't be able to do it. There is not enough time in the day for me. However, I will be doing three letters. So I'm going to be doing the first three letters of my name, S, U and Z. So I have actually chosen four books for these three challenges just because I kind of wanted a bit of a variety, a bit of a choice in case I'm not in the mood for some things. But I am really excited to start. So starting with S, that's either to read a romantic comedy or a book with a red cover. So I have two books for this one. The first one is Happy Go Lucky by L.H. Cosway. This is an office romance, there's a bit of a rom-com. We have the grumpy boss and then the really happy-go-lucky heroine. This was originally, I think, released in instalments in L.H. Cosway's newsletter and I actually saved them all, but I haven't had a chance to read it. But now the whole book's out in Happy Go Lucky. I am going to just sit down and read that 
for the S challenge. So the next book I wanted to read for this challenge is Get a Life Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert. So this kind of brushes on both challenges under S which is romantic comedy and red cover because the writing on the cover is red so I think that counts. I've really been looking forward to read this so I'm using this opportunity to pick it up. So in this book our heroine is tired of being really boring and she rocks and she ropes in her neighbour to help spice up her life. I really cannot wait to read this. I've never read Talia Hibbert before, but I hear so many good things, so I am super excited to start on this book. So the next challenge is you, which is to read an unread book by an author you love or a foodie romance. So this was really easy for me. I'm not much for foodie romances, but there is a book that came out which I have not yet read, and that is Blood Truth by J.R. Ward. So I adore J.R. Ward so I don't really understand why I haven't picked this up so I was going to read it in August and yet somehow August just it just didn't happen I had such a bad month in August I barely read anything so I am finally making time to read Blood Truth and I cannot wait if I'm honest um, Happy Go Lucky by L.H. Cosway would also fall under this category as well because I love Cosway's books normally but I'm really hoping that I'll get to read both Happy Go Lucky and Blood Truth by J.R. Ward for this week so the next letter is Z, which is to read a sci-fi romance or read a book which has had a film or TV adaption. Guys, we all know that I'm going to sci-fi romance for this one. And we also may realise that when I was choosing challenges for different letters, I may have put sci-fi romance on Z on purpose because I knew that I was going to have to read a Z book. But can I say any excuse to read an alien romance? So the book that I'm going to read is Shielded Heart by Tiffany Roberts. I don't know why I haven't read this book yet. It's been out a while and I just have not had the chance to pick it up. And yet I freaking love the Infinity City series. The first book was absolutely amazing. And I honestly, I cannot wait to dive into this one. Um, so I am using the name of Thon as an excuse to finally, finally pick this one up it's gonna be so good I am so excited we all know how much I enjoy a sci-fi romance especially when there are some aliens involved so yeah really looking forward to this I'm really looking forward to all the books that I have picked for this challenge I've picked four um, over the three challenges and I'm really hoping that I can complete them all so keep your fingers crossed for me we'll be and there you have it guys. That is our TBR for the Nameathon Readathon. We hope that you guys will be joining us. Don't forget to use the hashtag Nameathon during this readathon. We are so excited and we can't wait to get started. Don't forget to follow us at undercoversbookblog.com and follow Stephanie at ideallyinspiredreviews.com. I will also leave links to both of our social media channels in the information box down below. Like this video and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of our videos. Thank you so much for watching guys and we'll see you in the next video. Bye. You're the